Okay. We're going to continue today in our study of the mark of the beast. And we're going to be uh, continuing on here. Uh, I think we left off on page, uh, we're going to say right around 173, I think is about where we left off. And if you remember last week, we were covering a timeline, you know, the timeline of the, in, in the time period of the two witnesses that are written in Revelation 11, where it talks about the two witnesses and it talks about the rebuilding of the temple and talks about the prophecy concerning the two witnesses and the, and the work, the, the prophetic work that they would do. Uh, how they would, uh, they would, you know, speak about the 1,260 days, those days cast about with darkness. Um, you know, they would prophesy concerning what, you know, about what sin brings and about what this, taking this mark of the beast, what it actually, what it actually brings. And as we closed last week, we left off on, um, I want to take a look here at page 172, where, um, where it talks about the wars and the rumors of war, you know, are not the end. And pastor, where he says, he says, we have had many wars among the tribes and nations since the days of Yahshua, but when is the end? And Matthew 24-7 shows that actually nation would rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And he shows these other signs that would actually start and show this first half, you know, the beginning of this tribulation. And I do want to, I do want to show you a couple of things here. And Matthew twenty four seven here, and it does talk about. Let me see if I can kind of zoom in a little bit there. In Matthew twenty four seven, it shows, it shows there for for nation will rise against nation, and of course, you know that means one country against another. Uh, and it also shows kingdom against kingdom. Now, I don't know. I, I know our, uh, the great Kohan, the, is, you know, that studies, that is the, uh, uh, the biology. He is an expert in biology. Um, there is a, a, a classification system in biology, and, and one of the top classifications that they have, one of the areas they have, um, one of the top classifications is a kingdom. They call it a kingdom. And then the next, the next one go down, I think, is... Uh, phylum, and then it goes class and order, genus, species, subspecies, if I remember my biology right. But the very top echelon, the very top of that is shown as a kingdom, and they have the kingdom divided here. You can see how they have the kingdoms divided. Um, you know, they have a kingdom of, oh, I can't read, I can't, uh, uh, proto protolis, which are basically like your one-celled organisms, like your algae, uh, uh, your protozoans, and then they also have another kingdom there that consists of bacteria. And then there's another kingdom that consists of funguses, and then you have another one that consists of plants, and another one that consists of animals. Think about what Pastor has been bringing out, what the scriptures show about what practicing sin does. What does it do? It mutates. It mutates and it creates these bacteria, right? You get the bacteria that are in the system. When sexual sins are committed, what takes place? You get a you get a you get a mutation of the bacteria, and these bacteria and the, the you've got the viruses and the bacteria both. And what do they do? What what do these things do? They get in and they infect. They've got they they, they have they get it where they in, uh, these these ba these bacteria and these viruses have actually gotten into the plants where they actually become a part of the plant structure. Look at E. coli. E. coli, you know, used to be able to take and wash E. coli off, right? But now it's actually become a part of the plant. It's actually within the plant itself, so you can't really wash it off. Uh, you look at what takes place with the, uh, with the different types of uh, bacteria and the diseases, the, you know, the diseases that are being, that, the, that mankind thought that they had wiped out through the use of antibiotics. Look at syphilis and gonorrhea. Those are all types of bacteria these uh, sexually transmitted infections. And now the, the antibiotics that were used to treat them, they don't work. So you can see, that you can see how this, this, this kingdom, this bacterial kingdom, how it's actually coming against the plant kingdom, the animal kingdom, how it's coming against. You see that kingdom against kingdom there. That's another aspect of all of this. But you can see the, 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 the nation will rise against nation, the kingdom against kingdom. And then famines, look at famines. 
next down you have famines, and there will be famines. What is a famine? Well, one idea or one definition of a famine is an extreme scarcity of food, and it relates to starvation. You know, the, you know, the, uh, the, the, the ground, they're just not producing, or they're not producing the quantity of food that's there. But what, what further did Pastor tell us about the food that is being produced? It's nutritionally deficient, right? He said people can grow, they can grow a carrot the size of, you know, you know, the size, you know, a huge carrot, but the nutritional value is nothing. And if there's no tr nutritional value in there, what, what, what does that cause? Well, it causes a ravenous appetite. You can see there's a, there's a lack of nutrition in the food. And it doesn't matter what's eaten. If it's not providing what the body needs, I mean, the body's still going to have that hunger. It's still going to be starving. It's still going to be missing that. So you can see that it's not just a quantity of food, but it's also the quality. It's also the quality of the foods as well. And then you have the, the pestilence, which are the, which are the disease epidemics. Pestilence is a contagious or infectious epidemic disease that is virulent. And that word virulent there, it means infectious. It means contagious, poisonous. It means it's lethal. Look how dangerous it is. I mean, the pestilence is, it's, it's infectious, contagious, poisonous, lethal. It's malicious. It's venomous. It's hostile. There is nothing kind about pestilence. And it also means something that is destructive or pernicious, you know. Uh, you know it, it, it's, it's destructive. This pestilence is destructive. And then you see there's also earthquakes in, in place after place. And Pastor showed, showed us, you know, that not, only, you know, that not only meant earthquakes itself, you know, the physical earthquakes, but it also had to deal with natural disasters. You know, look at the unusual weather patterns that are caused by the, by the, uh, by the defilement of the firmament. You know, you don't have gentle rains anymore. It's either, it, you don't, either don't have anything or it's a torrential downpour. And so you, you see the unusual weather patterns, extreme droughts in one area or extreme flooding in another in others. In the all about, you know, all about this, we have to remember, men, that a curse causeless will not come. That these, 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 these so-called natural disasters are not just naturally occurring. You know, they're occurring because of a reason, because the earth has been defiled, because mankind has transgressed the law, has changed the ordinances and broken the everlasting covenant. It's through the sin and the iniquity that's been pushed forth. That's why these things are, that's why these things are coming about. And this is the work of the two witnesses. This was the work that the two witnesses began teaching when the house of Yahweh was reestablished. And they went forth and they brought this warning. And this is why they were hated. This is why the apostles and the prophets were hated. This is why Yahshua was hated. Because they exposed the sins. They exposed the destructive things that mankind was doing. And then again, you know, we see the reason there that, this, that these things were coming. The earth is defiled under the inhabitants of it because they have transgressed the laws changed the ordinances and broken the everlasting covenant. It's, not, it's, it's no mystery as to why these things are there. To the world, it's a mystery because they reject the laws of Yahweh. Or they reject the, the, the only source of knowledge that came from the creator of the universe. They reject it. They do away with it because it, it doesn't say what they want to hear. And because of this, because of the transgression of the law, because they've changed the ordinances and because they've broken that everlasting covenant, because of that, the curse has devoured the earth, and they who dwell therein are desolate. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. This is ultimately what's going to take place, this great nuclear burning. This is what it's going to lead to. And then on the top of page 173, we're talking, we're getting into, uh, you, know, you know, Daniel. Daniel's prophecy concerning the missing, you know, concerning the, the missing week. Um, in Daniel 9.27 here, it says, Daniel said, in the midst of this week, in the midst of this seven-year period, three and a half years after the strong covenant is made, the sacrifice and the oblation or libation would be stopped. Okay? So going back and going back here and just kind of looking here in Daniel 9.27, and he will confirm a covenant with many for one week, for seven years. And remember... This is, this is the prophecy of that seven-year peace plan. And that word many, Pastor showed this in, in, uh, 
uh, he explained that to us and it's explained in a, a great, a, a great, great, great amount of detail in the nuclear baby, the, the explosion of sin, the birth of the nuclear baby, the explosion of sin. Pastor dedicated that book to going through this, you know, going through this, this seven year time period and, and showing, and, and showing the, you know, showing this in detail. And we see here the seven-year plan was signed on September 13th, 1993 to go into effect October 13th, 1993. Then after three and a half years, it was shut down by Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on 4-13-97, just as it was in the midst. And again, the articles that detailing that, we're not, I'm not going to go through them tonight because uh, that would take up, I mean, we could, we could spend the next three or four classes in dealing with just that. But go back and rehearse, just go back and rehearse those things. And then, and, and then Pastor, he continues and he, and he shows here, he says, from the book of Revelation, Yachanan said that the two witnesses would preach and then they would be killed. Well, they would have their death. Remember that word kill doesn't necessarily mean physically kill them, but it means to call for their death. That they, that he, they would be hated so much that people would want them dead and that they would and that attempts would be taken on their lives, you know, or, and attempts would be taken on anyone who would fall, you know, who would follow after them as well, and who would uphold and teach those, uh, and, and uphold those teachings as well. But Yahshua said that in the book of Matthew that wars and famines and disease and earthquakes from nuclear explosions would prevail for the first half of the three and a half years of the seven-year covenant. Then in the midst of the week, they shall deliver you up to be afflicted, and they shall kill you. You're going to be hated above all nations for my, men's, for my name's sake. Now, why would people be delivered up to be afflicted? Just as, Such a thing just does not transpire in the United States today. What thing would cause this thing to come to pass? You know, this is all about the hate. This is all about hatred and, and, the, and the building of fear. And a lot of it you see taken in the place today. Look at what, look at what, is, what is taking place with the conflict that you have, the fear that is being built, and the divide that is being, you know, the wedge that is trying to be driven, trying to divide the people with what's going on with law enforcement and members of the other, uh, and members of the community. You know, there is a fear that is being driven in there, and it's, it's, you, you, we were warned to be careful, you know, to, 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 to guard ourselves and not fall into that. But it's, it's a tactic that's always been used, you know, fear, you know, the, the driving of fear. And this is, what, this is what drives the war industry today. The defense industry is driven by fear. Well, what are we going to do if they come to attack us? We have to make sure that we have the means to protect ourselves. Okay, and this, this, is, this is what Satan, you know, this is what she, she banked on. And this is what she has inspired to, be taken, to take place. And this fear, as Pastor shows here, this fear is what is causing each nation on this earth to build nuclear weapons. And Yahshua said that in Matitha 24, 21, that this would actually lead to, lead to destroy all life if, it were, if Yahweh didn't step in and put an end to it. Remember, he said that, that if it were possible, that all flesh would be wiped off the face of the earth. earth. You know, but for the elect's sake, those days are going to be shortened, so that, that does not take place. Then in Revelation, Revelation 12, 13, it shows here, it says, When the dragon saw that she was cast into the earth, she persecuted the woman that brought forth the man. And again, on page 173, on page 173, oh, did I go too far? Yeah. On page 173, again, on page 173 here, uh, it says, Remember the war in heaven. And again, Pastor covered that in the very beginning of the book on uh, uh, the, the birth of the nuclear baby, the explosion of sin. Remember the war in heaven that took place, and this, this took place, was in, film, was in fulfillment of Revelation, uh, of Revelation 12, 7. There were 21 major fragments of the shoemaker levy 9 comet that struck Jupiter over a period of six days. And remember, that's those, those parts of that, me, those parts of that, uh, of that comet began striking after sunset on July 16th, 1993, was after the weekly Sabbath, and lasted for six days. And Pastor, they showed how there were no strikes on, this, on, the, on the Sabbath, but it lasted for six days. 
Then in March 1997, the comet Hale-Bopp made its closest approach to the Earth, and at that point, Satan was cast to the Earth in fulfillment of Revelation 12, 7 through 12. Again, that is on page 12 and 13 of the birth of the nuclear baby. You know, Pastor, he wrote about these things before they took place. And then we see, and then we see the seven-year peace plan went back into effect. It went back into effect on, on uh, April 13th of 2004 and ended October 13th of 2007. The thing to remember about nuclear war. Remember, Pastor, you know, you know, Pastor caught a lot of uh, caught a lot of heat from the from 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 people because he said that nuclear war was going to begin. Remember, he talked about nuclear war being you know nuclear war taking place. Well, nuclear war. Remember, any war, and it doesn't matter if it's nuclear, doesn't matter if it's conventional, doesn't matter what kind of war it is. It does not begin with the dropping of a bomb. That's not what starts a war. It doesn't start there. Where does it start? It starts with planning. It starts with a, you know, it starts with planning and thinking about how things can be carried out. It's just like a chess game. A chess game doesn't begin with the move checkmate, right? Just like a, just like a door doesn't start with the, just start with the dropping of a bomb. Uh, the the a, a a game of chess does not begin with checkmate. Checkmate is the ultimate end of the, of, of the game. It's the ultimate result. It's the end of it. It's the end of everything, all the planning and all the strategic moves and everything that took place, you know, from the beginning all the way up until that point. It's the same way with, with wars. The game begins with planning, wars begin with planning, and the strategic movement and the sacrifices of pawns or other pieces until that checkmate has been achieved. And as as it was and as it is in the game of chess, just as it is in the game uh, in the game of I don't say I don't mean a game of war, but is it uh, just as it is in war? Once everything is in place, checkmate. Okay, so there's moves. You heard about the great Khan Yadidi. Remember the remember the articles he used to bring out, and he would say, "Look, you can see the movement." He says, "You can see this country making this move, this country making this move, this country making this move, getting ready for these wars." You know, that was taking place, you know, and it's continuing to take place until everybody gets into the spot that that, that they want, and then and then these things are going to come. These things are going to come to pass. We're going to see it. But these prophecies, Pastor has you know, Pastor has shown these prophecies are are fulfilled. We're just not seeing the end result of what sin brings. We haven't seen this nuclear burning. In the seventh book of Yisrael, Teachers of Righteousness, Part 2, October 2nd, 2007. He has this to say about what we just, about this, about this nuclear baby. He says, I want to read to you what I wrote in, in this, and then I want to show you how this prophecy was fulfilled. And it's fulfilled, and even this morning they handed me another article showing me that this martial law, that martial law, they started to exercise martial law in June. Yes, remember June? June, remember that? They started exercising martial law that same month. And at that time, here's my words, and these are, these are the words that he, that he wrote in the, in the nuclear baby. At that time, October 13th, 2007, four-fifths of the Earth's population will have been killed by wars, disease epidemics and earthquakes. But first, the nuclear baby is as follows. It was prophesied to be conceived on September 12, 2006. It's prophesied to take nine months before this baby reaches maturity, which is June 12, 2007. That's on page 114 in the birth of the nuclear baby, June 2007. Near the end of that period, nuclear wars will have taken place and that will have killed a third part of man over a fourth part of the earth in and around the great river Euphrates. Okay? Now, Kahan Yadidia reads, read this, he read this article yesterday, I don't know if you remember, about an incident that took place down in Barksdale Air Force Base. Involved nuclear weapons in a B-52. Well, we're going to rehearse it here. It says, now Kahan Yadidia read this yesterday about the Air Force that was scheduled to actually take six nuclear bombs to Iran. They were to take them to 
Iran, which is in and around the great river Euphrates. It's right in the seat of it. If you can imagine the devastation right then and there with six nuclear bombs that would have taken place, it would have pretty much shut down the work. It would have shut down the work. And then what was to follow? What's going to follow that and probably be interwoven back and forth is, of course, the strike back of the United States will suffer. And you can count on this. I mean, it looks to me like anyone would see that these prophecies are taking place with the very month here and the date. I mean, I mean, how could it be any closer than what it is here? But it says WMR has learned from U.S. and foreign intelligence sources that the B-52 transporting the six stealth AGM air-to-ground missiles, 129 advanced cruise missiles, each armed with a W-80-1 nuclear warhead on August 30th, was destined for the Middle East via Barksdale Air Force Base in Louisiana. They were on the way. They were on their way. However, elements of the Air Force supported by U.S. intelligence agency personnel successfully revealed the ultimate destination of the nuclear weapons, and the mission was aborted. It was aborted. The destination was, was discovered. And Pastor, he, he puts here, he says, I like that word, aborted. He said, I think I'm going to name the new, next new, uh, newsletter the aborted nuclear baby. But then he says, okay. They used the word aborted. Weapons and the mission was aborted due to internal opposition within the Air Force and, US, the, and the, the U.S. intelligence community. So it was stopped. Who stopped this? Who put it in the people's minds to stop it and then hold back this war? I know who it was. You know who it was, brethren. I read it to you before it ever took place. Yahweh is holding back the nuclear war until his work is complete. Praise Yahweh. So it was set to go just as past, just as the scriptures show that it is, show that it would have, but it was held back for the completion of this work. The work wasn't done. The work isn't done yet. When the work is completed, these nuclear wars are going to take place. It is now apparent, they say. And they, com- uh, they, they, they say the command and control breakdown as reported as, reported as a bent spear incident to the Secretary of Defense and White House was not the result of a chain of command failure, but as the result of a revolt and pushback by various echelons, which means chain of command, kind of like a ladder of command within the Air Force and intelligence agencies against a planned, a planned U.S. attack on Iran using nuclear and conventional weapons. Now, if you want to turn to that and actually read it again, it's in Revelation 7, verses about 1 through 6, 1 through 3, actually, he says. Uh, Yahweh says that one is holding back this thing, and it shows that, he, that it is he who does until a certain thing is completed. He says, if you look on down, we don't have the article. He says, you don't have the article, but I do. He says, WMR has learned from military sources on both sides of the Atlantic that there was a definite connection between Israel's Operation Orchard and Bent Spear involving the B-52s that flew the six nuclear-armed cruise missiles from Minot Air Force Base in North Dakota to Barksdale. There is also a connection between these two events as the Pentagon's highly classified Project Checkmate. It's interesting that they use that, that they would use, kind of use that title, Project Checkmate. Think about the end result of a chess game. And about the pawns moving around. This is what they're. This is what they're doing. Um, I didn't realize that that was there. Uh, that 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 was actually called Project Checkmate until I'd actually, you know, thought about. Well, this is just like a chess game, and they're they're just that. This is how all this is going out. And then I run across this, and it was kind of surprising. But uh, anyway, but it says it's classified as Project Checkmate, a compartment, uh, a compartmented. U.S. Air Force program that has been working on an attack plan. Now get this, remember this, to begin working on an attack plan since what month? Tell me. Since June. June, yes, June. As Condoleezza Rice said, and I also said this myself when I was bringing this out, the war doesn't start when the bomb hits the city. That's not the start of a war. The start of the war is with the people that put the war show on for you. Well, this is the case. They turned against each other, and it was aborted or held back for a certain time period. On an attack plan for Iran since June, 
They'd been working on it since June, around the same time that Cheney was working on the joint Israeli-U.S. attack scenario on Iran. So all of this, brethren, was going on at that time, just as we prophesied it before now. This came up before anyone knew it. These people didn't know it either, uh, either that are reporting it right now. So you can see here how, you know, you know, Yahweh, you know, the prophecies are fulfilled, you know. And you look at the detail, and the, and the news articles prove it. The news articles show it. But the ultimate result of this is being held back because we still have a work to do. We still have a work to do. But this bringing forth, on page 173 here, bringing forth the man is to bring forth, and this is what the, the, the you know, Satan hates. He was cast to the earth, and, you know, and, and uh, it shows that, he, uh, that she persecuted the woman brought, that brought forth the man. Now remember the prophecies that Pastor talked about that. But anyone that brings forth Yahshua or brings forth that Yahshua was a man, that Yahshua was, was a man like, just, like, just like everybody else is a man, but he perfectly kept Yahweh's laws and was converted, you know, and for what Yahshua stands for, yes, the, anyone who says that does suffer persecution. But in effect, say, it show, Pastor shows here, was, uh, he says, when Satan is cast to the earth, you know, she loses this vantage point this, uh, as a power base for broadcasting fear. But then she utilizes her representatives to be able to do that. And Matithia 2415, they're on the page, top of page 174. Uh, Matthew 24, 15, and, and uh, when you therefore see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, let him who reads has understanding. You know, let him who reads, uh, whosoever reads, let him have understanding. Who is Satan's representative on earth? It's the Pope. Praise Yahweh. It is. Who is Yahweh's representative on the face of the earth? Praise Yahweh. Absolutely. So you can see here, you know, you, know, you know, Satan's representative is very, very active, just as Yahweh's representative is very active today. Let's see here. Okay, and then we see here, and then on page 174, a pastor, he gets into the events of the last, of the last three and a half years, you know, and he shows here, he says, that, you know, he shows, we see the seven-year covenant is made, the first three and a half years, and the mist, what takes place there. And then uh, in, in the last three and a half years, you know, we, you know, which, you know we're going through, you know, we're, we're, in, we're in this time period right now just prior to this great nuclear burning that's going to take place. And after these things take, pl after these things take place, um, at the end of the seven-year time period on page 175 here, it shows immediately but after the great tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And pastor, he shows here, he shows at the very end, at the very end of this great seven-year tribulation, this nuclear holocaust that will block out the sun and the moon and the stars, all hope of life is going to be gone. You know, it's at that time, then will, be, will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then the tribes of the earth shall mourn. They shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And then he shall send his malachim with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds of the earth, or from the four winds of, of you know, from, from the four winds. Now, part of what takes place during that time, after, after this great, after this, you see, we see what, what, take, what take place is going to take place is the, let me see, I'm probably getting ahead of myself here. But it talks about, pastor talks about, uh, about this, about the first resurrection that takes place. And many people don't realize that there are two resurrections, but I think I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, so let me get here to page 176. Um, and then, again, you know, we, we see here this rehearsal of scheduled events again. We see the strong covenant with, with seven years, the first three and a half years, the two witnesses, you know, the two witnesses prophesy concerning these times. 
in, in the midst of this week, and we see the hatred for the two witnesses arises. And again, you know, the uh, you know their their death is called for. And what we saw, if you remember the news articles that came out, and all of the the publicity and the um, the press that came out against Yahweh's house. It was never about what Yahweh's house teaches. It was never about teaching the laws of Yahweh. It was never about the. Uh, it was never about those things. It was always about character assassination. You know, people cannot get. There is not a person on the face of the earth. I don't care who they think that they are. They cannot get into a scriptural debate with pastor and when they are going to lose. Okay. And they know, they know that they cannot win on, a, they know they can't argue scripture. So if they can't argue that, then they're going to attack something else. They're going to attack a person's character. You see, this is actually done in the court systems quite frequently. You'll see character assassination that takes place. They bring up things that are really irrelevant. You know, they'll make up lies, they'll do whatever. And this is a lot of the things that we saw taking place. They, 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 they had this character assassination that was taking place. And then when we see here the, uh, 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 in item number six there, they show where Yahshua returns, the righteous in Yahweh are resurrected, while the living in Yahweh are changed. Now, if you remember, let me see if I have it here. In 2 Thessalonians here, and then, and, then, and then it shows the kingdom of Yahweh begins. Now, remember Christianity. Remember the big lie, the big lie that Satan taught back in Genesis chapter 3. If you commit sin, you will not surely die. Remember that showed the doctrine, that, that this is the beginning of the doctrine of the immortal soul. So when people, when people died and they went to the grave, their soul or their soul or they somehow floated up into the heavens and they were floating on a cloud playing a harp. Okay? If that was the case, what would be the purpose of a resurrection? If the person never died, why would they have to be brought back? See, there's nothing, see, there, it, it, doesn't make, it, it, it doesn't make any sense, you know, whatsoever. But there is a, you know, there is a resurrection. There's two resurrections take place. The first resurrection, there's all of those who have ever been called into Yahweh's house and have had the opportunity to be a part of this work. They are going to be called. They are going to, they are going to be resurrected, and they're either going to receive the reward or they're going to receive their consequences, one of the two. And then the kingdom of Yahweh will reign for that thousand-year time period, and the earth is going to be restored. The microorganisms are all going to go back. Everything is going to go back to the way that it was when it was created. And then there's going to be a second resurrection that, take pla that takes place when everybody else who has ever lived, who has never had the opportunity to know Yahweh, is going to be resurrected. And they're going to be given the opportunity that we have as far as making the choice between righteousness and evil. Which path, which tree are they going to choose? Which, which way are they going to choose? The difference is that they're going to have history of 6,000 years of what mankind rule, mankind's rule has done to the earth, and they're going to have 1,000 years of what following Yahweh's laws brings, and then they will have their choice to make. And I know I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit there, but uh, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 1 through 13 here on page 176, it says, Now we plead with you, brothers, concerning the coming of our King, Yahshua Messiah, and the gathering together to him, that you may not be soon shaken in mind, nor be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as if from us. So you can see just by the way that this is worded there. And then verse 3 starts off with, Let no man deceive you by any means. So look at the deception that is going to take place. Don't be shaken in mind. Don't be troubled nor by letter as if from us. You know, which shows that there's going to be some type of falsification, that the scriptures are going to be twisted to, to, actually, to actually try to get, the, to get the, the apostles to say something that they didn't say. You know, the wicked will twist the scriptures to their own destruction as, as, as the prophecies do show. 
And we, we, we've seen that. The lying pen of the scribes has falsified the scriptures and has written them wrong. You know, the house of Yahweh works tirelessly, pastor and the other priests, you know, they work tirelessly at correcting these things. At, cor at correcting the, these mistranslations. But he says, for that day will not come unless there comes a falling away first and that the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called gods or that is worshipped so that he is the Almighty, sits in the temple of Yahweh, showing himself that he is the mighty one. Okay, remember, the Pope, he sets himself up as a god. You know, the Pope is a god. When the Popes die, they become gods. Uh, the, as a matter of fact, the inscription on the, on the triple crown of the, uh, of the Pope says something along the lines of in place of the deity, I think is, is, is a real rough translation of what it means. So it shows that he actually sets himself up as a god. He is a god in that seat. He said, do you, do you, do you not remember when I was with you, still with you and I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining him so that he may be revealed in his time for the mystery of iniquity is already working but the one restraining him will continue to restrain him until he's made to appear in the midst. And then that wicked one will be revealed whom Yahshua will remove with the breath of his mouth. Yes, the, the, that wicked one it has been revealed. Remember the book Unveiling Satan? Her true identity revealed? You know, it lifts the veil off of who that being is and who her representative is. Um, you know, devil worship, the shocking facts, you know, it goes and it actually shows, you know, where are these traditions and, and, and these lies that are taught and that are followed by the religions of the world, where they come from and who they're actually in honor of. They're exposed. And now they have no cloak or covering for their sin. But who's, and, and it says, whom Yahshua will remove with the breath of his mouth. Okay, well, that's being done today through the preaching and through the teaching of the, you know, through the, 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 the preaching and the teaching of the truth and exposing the deception through the breath of his mouth, through the teaching, through the speaking, not blowing on somebody like some of the, like some of the movies in you know, Hollywood set would, would show that, but it's, it's through the teaching, it's through the exposing of the lies and make powerless with the appearance of his coming, you know, exposing who they are Whose coming is according to uh, see, whose coming is according to the energy of Satan, who works with all signs and powers and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of sin of, in those who are perishing, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, Yahweh will send them strong delusions that they would not believe the deception, or going to allow them allow them to be deceived. For this reason, Yahweh will send them strong, let's say, uh, in order that all those may be judged as not having believed the truth, but having delighted in sin. You know, the whole world delights in sin. You know, we, you know, we have the way of life and the way of death set before us. You know, we see, you know, we, you know, we see because our, because our eyes have been opened, we see, uh, you know, the, you know, the hell and the hatred and the, and the sickness and the disease is brought, brought about by sin. And it's getting worse. Every day it's getting worse and worse and worse. It's not getting better. And it won't get better until it's actually, we actually put a stop to it. But we are obligated to always give thanks to Yahweh for you, brothers, beloved of him, because Yahweh chose you as first fruits for salvation. Remember the parable of the a parable of the wedding feast. Not everybody was allowed to come to the king's table. You cannot come to the king's table. You cannot come to the king's house unless you're invited. It's an invitation only. Coming to the table of the creator of the universe is by invitation only, and that's what our calling was. Our calling was an invitation to come and be a part of this work to qualify to be a part of this everlasting kingdom, to qualify, to learn, to train, and to qualify for a job, an everlasting job in this kingdom. This is what we've been called here for. Yahweh chose us to be here. We wouldn't be here otherwise. 
He chose you as, as first, first fruits for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and by the faith in the truth. Now remember what the Spirit is. Remember, Yahweh's laws, the law, remember the laws are spiritual. It's the law of Yahweh. It's sanctified through the law of Yahweh. Sanctified through the law and by the faith, you know, and, and by the faith, remember the just will live by the faith. Remember what Jacob said? He said, show me your faith without your works and I'll show you my faith by my works. You know, we believe and therefore we practice what we believe. We practice what we're taught and that's how we show our faith. This is, how, this is what separates us from the rest of the world. You know, we follow, we take on in, in keeping these laws and in, in, in keeping the law of Yahweh, you know, we take on the mark of Yahweh. We take on Yahweh's righteous character. That's exactly what we do. And that sets us apart. It marks us as belonging to Yahweh. In Revelation 24 through 6, it says, it says, And I saw the thrones and they who sat upon them, and judgment was given to them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahshua and for the word of Yahweh. And that, which, is, and that which, and the, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither the idol or neither their likeness, nor has received its mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. Remember, that's the, it has to do with the way that we think and the things that we do. And they lived and reigned with Messiah for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live until a thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy. Look, blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power, but they shall be the priests of Yahweh and of Yeshua and of the Messiah and shall reign with him for a thousand years. And this is all part of that first resurrection. 1 Thessalonians 4, 14 through 16. For if we believe that Yeshua died and rose again, even so, uh, even so them also which sleep or have died in Yeshua, he will bring with them. For this we say unto you by the word of Yahweh that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Savior shall not precede the, those who are asleep but for Yahshua himself will descend from heaven with the shout with the voice of the Malak Gadol and with the trumpet of Yahweh and the dead and Messiah will rise first and this is you know again this talks about the you know pastor goes into much more detail about this a little bit later so I don't want to I don't want to don't want to get into that but he covers that back on page 215 214 213 212 so we'll be getting into that here and here in a little bit but he's just kind of covering it here kind of setting it in our minds that this is this is what's going to take place in 1 Thessalonians 4 17 through 18 then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet Yahshua in the air and we will ever be with him the, uh, wherefore comfort one another with these words and it says it, 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 you know, and it shows that they'll be uh, resurrected with all of the other righteous dead who have known Yahweh and have followed his laws those, uh, those living ones at that time who also know Yahweh and follow his laws will be called up together with the resurrected ones the living ones who are changed and the dead in Yahshua who are resurrected are given the gift of eternal life this is the blessing of the first resurrection. It's one of them. You know, it's much more than eternal life. It's, it's we're, again, remember, we're trying to qualify for a position in the kingdom of Yahweh. A part of this, you know, part of the, you know, part of the administration, I think, as, as Ephesians shows. You know, um, and Revelation 22, 14, blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. So you can see, it's those who keep the laws of Yahweh, those who actually do the commandments, that they're the ones that are going to have right uh, to the tree of life. In Matthew 24, 36 through 42, but of that day and hour no man knows, not even the Malachim in heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days and days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving up in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And they, and they knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall be the coming of the Son of Man. You know, this world is oblivious to what's going on. They don't have a clue. Um, you know, but, you know, but, 
but men, we, we, I mean, we need to be sober and vigilant. You know, pastor, he brings, and the priests bring these prophecies, and these prophecies are brought to us. And they are being fulfilled right before our eyes. You know, and it's a, it's a timeline, and it and, and it should serve as it should serve as a as a you know they serve as markers for us as to where we are, but it also that we can put our full complete and our complete trust in Yahweh. Um, and they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two shall be in the field, one taken and one left. One righteous, but the other hates the Yahweh and His laws. Two grinding in the mill, one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not the hour that our king does come. Now there is something about there is something about that. The world will take that and they'll twist that around and say, okay, well that's talking about a rapture that the that the uh, that the righteous are are raptured away and taken up into heaven, so they wouldn't have to suffer the great tribulation. Well, take what's written here about the two in the field, one taken and one left. And the two grinding at the mill, one taken and one left. Go back to the parable of, wheat, of the wheat and the tares. Everybody know that? The wheat, parable of the wheat and the tares? See who it is who's gathered first. Praise Yahweh. Yes, <laughs> it is. It's the tares that are gathered first. It's the tares that are gathered first, not the wheat. So, again, you know, you can, you can see the, the confusion that's in the mind. You know, they, they, the, the, the Baal's preachers, they err not knowing the scriptures. But in Luke 21, 34 to 36, And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time that your hearts be overcharged with the eating of the flesh, the drunkenness of wine, and the cares of this life, so that that day comes upon you unaware. For as a snare shall come unto them all who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch therefore and pray always. And this is important. Think about this. Watch therefore. Watch. Be sober. Be vigilant. Watch. When we come to services, you know, you know, I know it gets hot. I know it's hard to concentrate, but listen and watch because the, 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 way, the, the, the way of Yahweh is proclaimed here. And the way to enter that kingdom is here, where we are, the prophecies that are being fulfilled. It's coming forth from here. You're not going to hear it anywhere else. And sometimes as pastor, you know, pastor has said, you know, how many times has he said, well, if, if you miss it here, I don't know if I'm going to have time to bring it again. You know, um, I mean, I've heard him say that many, many, many times. If you don't get this now, I may, not, I may never have the opportunity to bring it again, and you may never hear it again. But watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all of these things, and that, that, shall, come upon, that shall come and pass, or that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. You know, that's, you know, that's, you know, that's a, that's, that's a pretty important thing there. Watch and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape these things. You know, unlike Christianity who thinks they have things owed to them, you know, we, you know, we don't, we have to prove ourselves worthy. We have to prove that we want this way above all else. And we have to, you know, and we have to beg and pray, you know, that we are worthy to escape these things and to be able to, to be able to stand and that the things that we do are pleasing to Yahweh. You know, that, sh that is our goal. That's what we should be, that's our whole focus should be on pleasing Yahweh and doing everything that we possibly can to, to, to overcome, to take on that perfect righteous character that he himself has. Now, chapter 11, here on page 179. Chapter 11, the, the way of escape. Now, we read about the nuclear wars and about the destruction and, and, the, and the, everything that's going to be coming to pass, you know, the disease epidemics, but there is a way of escape. Yahweh loves, he says here, Pastor writes, Yahweh loves those who turn to him and call on his name for their protection. The spirit of prophecy which comes from Yahweh has brought you this series on the mark of the beast. In Revelation 19.10, I am your fellow servant and of your brothers that have te the testimony of Yahshua. Worship Yahweh, for the testimony of Yahshua is the spirit of prophecy. Now, Yahweh has shown us in the time of trouble, that, that uh, shown us a time of trouble such as there never was before. This time of trouble is the great tribulation. It's shown to be a time of severe pressure on all life. 
you know, severe, severe pressure on all life, but especially severe on the believers of the house of Yahweh. You know, we've seen some pretty tough times. You know, we've seen some tough, some tough times in the past, or what we thought were tough times. You know, but you think about our brothers. Think about the brothers that went before us. You know, we have not yet resisted to bloodshed as our brothers have in the past. You know, we have, you know, we do have, we do have, you know, maybe a lot of the things that we have, the, the, the things that we have to deal with now are, are, I think, are probably a lot more subtle. The influences we have now are powerful. You think about entertainment, you think about the, the ease of the way that things can come into our minds, the things, the ease of the way that, you know, that things can be done. You know, they didn't have the internet back then. You know, they didn't have the internet back in 1934. They didn't have the internet back in 19, or at least cons the consumer-driven internet where, uh, where the people were able to get to it as we are now. Uh, back when I was in high school, back in 1982 when I graduated high school, it wasn't, it, it wasn't available. It wasn't there. That was the same year that the House of Yahweh was established, was in 1982. You know, for people to go out and do things, you know, to, you know, to go out and fulfill lust, they had to go to physical stores. They had to go to physical places. They physically had to go there. Now somebody can go and... Pop, 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 pop. There we go. It's right there. And you know what? Nobody knows except your internet service provider, they know, okay? But nobody around knows. Yeah, you, you, it's, 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 you know, what we do on these things can be hidden. It, 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 it can be hidden. But you know what? There's not a thing, not a single thing that we think we hide that will not be made manifest. It will be made manifest. It will come out. Because as Pastor has explained to us with the microorganisms that make up our bodies, you know, we follow, when striving after righteousness, those microorganisms learn when we follow the laws of Yahweh that we can be trusted. When we break the laws of Yahweh, and we practice iniquity, we practice sin, the microorganisms will fear us. They won't work with us, and they sure won't do what we tell them to do. We cannot hide these things. We cannot hide them. You know, the, you know, the practicing of righteousness will be made evident. It'll be made evident to those microorganisms. And when we're sentenced, we're going to be, you know, those microorganisms are going to testify. I mean, they're, that is going to, that's going to testify, be a part of, you know, that's going to be a witness. Remember the great cloud of witnesses that surround us. Remember there's a, there's a cloud of microorganisms and stuff that actually surround each individual. And if we feed it righteousness, then they're going to see those things. But if we feed it unrighteousness, then that also is going to be made, made known as well. Okay, and that's one of the things, you know, that's one of the things that we need to kind of keep in mind also. But the spirit of prophecy that comes from Yahweh has brought you this series. Um, and then Yahweh has shown us in a time of trouble um, that this severe persecution is going to come about. Now in Yahweh here, Yahweh promises us protection from this terrible time. In Yael 2, 31 to 32, and it says, The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of Yahweh comes, or the, day, the, the wonderful day of Yahweh. And it shall come to pass that whoever shall call upon the name of Yahweh will be delivered, for in Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. As Yahweh has said, the remnant, uh, in the remnant whom Yahweh shall call. So notice that that word call is all in capital letters. Okay, so whoever shall call on the name of Yahweh, so anybody that uses the name of Yahweh is going to be delivered, right? 
That's all they got to do is use the name of Yahweh. They can practice whatever they want to. As long as they use the name of Yahweh, they're okay. Let's take a look at that word call. This definition, ah, darn it. This definition of the word call here. Okay, well, let me kind of I'll move things around. Okay, definition of call. It means to speak in a loud, clear voice as to be heard at a distance. Okay, whoever will call what the name of Yahweh, use the name of Yahweh, speak in the name of Yahweh, to announce or to read something loudly. You know, how about the, how about the testimony of Yahweh? How about, you know, how about these classes? How about the sermons? How about all of the, you know, how about those things? Who, who will announce or read the scriptures? Who will read the law? Who will teach the peaceful solution? That's all part of what it means to call, to tell, to order, to ask, or to come. What does pastor do when he's teaching, when he's calling out to the nations? Yes, he's calling out to them, but he's also inviting them, saying, come, ask, come to Yahweh's house. Come here and learn of these ways. To give the order for, to call a meeting. The Sabbath days, the feast days, the new moons. To utter a cry, to get in touch with by telephone. To address someone or something. To be, as in, to be called. Or to regard as being of a certain kind. To regard as being of a certain kind. To take on, to be made in the image and likeness of Yahweh. That's what this call means. To call what the name of Yahweh means to take on and, and to take on that righteous character. That same character that Yahweh himself exhibits. Because remember, Yahweh is creating, he wants, he's creating mankind in his image and his likeness. Because he wants a family to rule as he does who will choose to rule as he does. Not to be made to, but to make the choice to do that. And this is why these two ways, these, the, these choices are set before us today. You know, Yahweh wants to see if we truly want his way because that's, that's what he wants. He, he, he wants people who will choose. Because if we choose that way, then we're not going to depart from it. If we're made to go that way, there's always going to be some type of resistance. You know, that's like you can't make somebody do anything. You can't make somebody keep the laws. You can to an extent, but their heart won't be in it. And as soon as that pressure is taken off, they're going to go the exact opposite way. But the great day of Yahweh comes, as Yahshua tells us in Matthew 24, 29 to 31, immediately but after the time period of the great tribulation, the sun and the moon and the stars no longer give their, uh, give their light during the great tribulation. Yael was speaking of the same time, and he was speaking of the great tribulation, which starts with a strong covenant of seven years and ends at the end of this seven year with the great nuclear war. But this is before the day of Yahweh comes. And whoever shall call upon the name of Yahweh shall be delivered. This shows a place and a way of deliverance from the trouble, but only those who are worthy to escape. Now we're going to stop there on page 180. At the top of page 180 there on Yahweh's instructions. Yahweh will provide these Yahweh's instructions on how we can be part of this we can be, be, be a part of this great escape from the things that are soon going to be upon this earth. May Yahweh be with you and bless you.